Polrain, uh, Team 144. Uh, they, uh, I sat down with uh, 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 Dave over there, uh, Dave Campbell over there, too. Um, so, uh, first thing you see when the software opens up again is one of these intro screens. Uh, again, there is some useful stuff in here. Uh, I've uh, actually got the links for all this down at the bottom of the page. So, if you want to go check out like the free version, if you want to download it at home, you can do that. Um, there are inventor tutorials worked into here. Uh, they are phenomenal. Uh, they really do a good job of explaining like like what to do. Uh, not only that, but they're like follow along tutorials. So like. Um, uh, as you're doing it, uh, you you can have like the the instructions like set up like within the screen, and uh, and just forward them as you need to forward them. So so it's uh, it's really well done. Um, <clears throat> also got the same videos, uh, same kind of thing you saw this morning with Max. Uh, I'm not going to waste your time with that again this afternoon, but you get the idea behind what they are. Um, and then uh, the uh, uh, help getting started guide. Um, this is useful. I, I found it to be more useful for people who uh, already have like AutoCAD experience under their belt and they're just starting to pick up Inventor. Um, but uh, I, I would say it's, it's ultimately up to, uh, up to you to decide if it's worthwhile. Uh, so I put it on there and uh, it's there if you need it. Um, so uh, in order to get going, uh, I'd, I'd go ahead and close this uh, initial window here uh, and uh, get used to using the icons up top because they're, they're good for everything. Um, uh, then uh, uh, the nice thing about Inventor is that uh, all the tools are all in one place uh, on the ribbon at the top. Uh, uh, you, all your work area is all in this area. There's only one view, so you don't have to worry about like switching between views. You, you can bring up multiple viewports if you want, but I don't think I've in five or six years of using the software, I've never had to use it uh, multiple viewports. So. so uh, uh, and then uh, the most critical part of it, the thing that makes it so superly awesome, is uh, down the left-hand side of the program is the history. Uh, and uh, uh, you can edit anything you create at any point in time, uh, including, like, uh, it, let's say you finished an entire part, uh, and then somebody comes back and says, oops, that one uh, uh, corner of the thing is in the wrong place, you know, like, fix it. Uh, and you don't have to redo everything. You just have to go back to like that first part, and then I'd make the adjustment, and it updates everything. So, so really phenomenal at at, at keeping you uh, working quickly. Uh, it's one of the best reasons to use Inventor for uh, first projects. Um, when you go to uh, uh, initially into the program, uh, and you click on the new button in the upper left hand corner there, uh, this is on the ribbon. Um, you'll see that. Uh, uh, you get a menu that has a couple of different options uh, in it. Notice uh, over here on the left-hand side that you have a choice between English and metric uh, as well as mold design, but uh, if you click just a standard part, it doesn't know what unit you're in. Um, again, just like Max, but unlike Max, in Inventor that matters because you're making real parts. So if you don't make it the size you need it, you won't get the, it the size you need it. So. so it's, it's important that you, you measure things, it's important that you plug that stuff in, it's important that you use the, those, uh, uh, those uh, uh, numbers and stuff. Um, uh, so uh, the standard part files are both up at the top, uh, and you have a choice between two. You can do either a sheet metal part or a standard uh, part, and uh, both of them work pretty well, uh, but uh, the sheet metal part can be bent up um, and it, it's and you can't change the thickness of anything. Once you set a material, it's it's that thickness throughout. So yeah. Uh, yes, it can. Yeah, and uh, and that's one of the nice things about it. Uh, building parts in here is that you don't have to see if they're closed uh, or if there are any gaps in them. They're all solid models, pretty much from start. Uh, there are some exceptions. I'll point those out. But uh, 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 but you know it, they're solid models, so you just export it as STL and start printing. So. Okay. So yeah, it's cool. Uh, the next uh, row down there is uh, assembly files, and I, I probably think I want to spend the most time on those today um, uh, because uh, for FTC, they give you a kit of parts and you open them in Inventor and and just manipulate them. Uh, so you're not doing a whole lot of like custom part creation, but uh, that does come in handy to, to know how to do that. So, so I want to start with parts, move into assemblies, and then finally finish up with drawings. 
Uh, drawings are insanely useful if you ever have to have a part manufactured uh, and you send the you can just send the drawing to the person manufacturing it and then then they use that as reference for uh, building stuff. Uh, the cool thing is that everything is based off of the part files so you don't have to worry about whether or not it's going to work because they all work with each other uh, very fluidly. Um, so if you click on standard, dot, uh, uh, standard uh, parentheses in dot ipt at the top there uh, and then choose create at the bottom, uh, that'll start a new part file. And again, it takes a little while for that uh, to open that initial part. Once you got the first one open, then it's a lot faster. So, uh, and these are brand new lap, uh, brand new desktop uh, computers. Uh, uh, only about maybe six months old, not even that. So it's it's. Uh, and I think they're all i fives. So I think. Um, but uh, I don't even see this one. No, oh, okay. Anyway, anyway. Uh, uh, but they're pretty quick. They they got a, they got sufficient amount of RAM, so it's still taking this long, but. Uh, if you're dealing with like using this on an old workstation um, or an old desktop, uh, uh, it may run a little slower. You might notice some lag in it, but for the most part, it's pretty quick. Um, when I open a uh, file initially, uh, again, you see that it fills in this uh, a workspace area uh, with a, a gradient. You have the same navigation cube as you had in uh, in 3 Studio Max. They're trying to like standardize those so that they work the same way. And it does work the same way. All you have to do is just pick a corner or a face or an edge or whatever, and it'll move to it. Um, so to get started, any file, anything you create in Inventor is made using a, a sketch. So uh, in order to start building, you have to go over at the, to the top uh, on the left-hand side and choose Create 2D Sketch. At that point, it pops up uh, the three basic planes that you're provided with. This, again, this is the same sort of setup that we had uh, in, uh, um, uh, in uh, uh, Max. Uh, notice the uh, little indicator in the corner, it's in the same exact place, the X axis, the Y axis, and the Z. Um, notice that it, it's putting the Y axis going up. Um, that's a, a European standard, but, but it really doesn't affect too much because you, you just, uh, uh, you still build parts the same way. So uh, again, let's start with something really like fairly basic, um, and I'll show you how to do some extrusions and some revolutions. So, so uh, uh, choose the top plane, which is that one there, to get started. When you do that, uh, notice again your view reorients, um, and so uh, Z is pointing up, and X X Y is pointing. Uh, uh, well, X is pointing to the uh, to the left, but it actually goes left, right, and Z actually goes up and down. So. Um, and uh, let's start drawing a, a shape here. Uh, I'm going to use the line tool at the top. Notice I'm already in the right menu. Uh, that's the cool thing about, about Inventor is that you don't have to figure out where you should be next. The program does that for you. It says, oh, you're building a sketch. I'll give you sketch tools. So, uh, the, you know, like this is, like I just said, it's, it's re just ridiculously simple. Um, when you start building something, uh, Again, note where your origin is uh, because uh, that can make a difference as far as like uh, building revolutions or, or building parts that have symmetry. Um, if you want something to look the same on one side as it does on another, then that has to be set up correctly to, in order to be able to, uh, um, uh, to take advantage of, of the symmetry there. Um, notice also that when you hover your mouse button over any of those lines, like it gives you like a couple of different um, uh, changes in the shape of that cursor. First of all, uh, notice this, the cursor itself is shaped like a plus sign um, and uh, uh, there's a little yellow dot underneath it and you're always given coordinates for where you are in your space. So no matter where you are it tells you what what coordinate is what. So X and Y in this case it's uh, at this point it's 0.335 inches and 0.373 inches. Um, again, that's all like kind of tied into making sure that you get stuff built the right size and the right shape. However, when you initially create something in this program, you're just sketching a part as as a loose sketch. So, like, let's say I want to draw a box, um, then it doesn't matter what size or shape you build it. You just take this 
and you draw a box <laughs> as fast as you can. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then uh, what drives the size of the part is the dimension that you add to that. So uh, let me demonstrate. Um, uh, let's do a rectangle here like I was just doing there. Um, if I hover over the origin, notice that my yellow dot changes to green. That's to indicate that, a, that you're snapping to directly to the origin. Uh, that can be important uh, if you need to put something directly on that point. Um, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a part that uh, surrounds the origin. So I'm going to start it in one corner and then drag the other side to the other corner. So just like this, and that's it. I, I, I don't care what size it is. I don't care if it's, it's the right proportions even. Um, as long as it's, a, it's relatively rectangular, um, that's the only thing that matters. Uh, the reason for that is, again, because you can go back in and add dimensions as well as uh, constraints to the part to help you to locate it in space and, and tell how big it is. So, uh, for instance, uh, let's make this part so that it's uh, 2 inches by 2 inches square and it's centered in our scene. So here's how you go about that. Uh, go up to the top, on, again on the ribbon, and choose the dimension tool. See it uh, right there about the center, it's in the, the constrained tab area. Uh, and it, this one's a universal dimension tool. Uh, it smart, does smart dimensions, it lets you do vertical, horizontal, angular, uh, anything else. Uh, it automatically decides what it needs based on what you pick on. So uh, you can do a vertical dimension one of two different ways. Uh, if I choose a vertical line and just click it and drag out and place, that creates a dimension and it also tells me how big the, the, that uh, line currently is and gives me a box to be able to uh, allow me to change it. So if I want to make it two inches, type in two and hit enter. Now it's too big to see so I need to zoom out. Uh, and again, it's, it's the mouse button so just scroll the scroll wheel to zoom in or out. Uh, kind of to tell which one you're doing until you see something uh, show up, but, but uh, you should be able to get there eventually. Alright, uh, next thing I want to do is I want to add a horizontal dimension, so same thing, click a horizontal line, and again type a value of 2, and it adjusts the size. Uh, there's another way to create dimensions like that, um, and uh, if I click on a dimension I can delete it. If I pick two vertical lines, then it, ta it calculates the distance between them. Um, so that's kind of a, a very handy thing to do. Um, also, all of the boxes in these programs, like this one, the editing boxes and stuff, are smart, uh, are popular with smart fields. Um, what that means is that you can enter uh, 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 math, e mathematical equations into the field itself and it will do the calculation for you. So you don't have to have a calculator open while you're messing with the program. So. Uh, the other cool thing that it does is it, it relates certain dimensions, uh, or you can relate sorry, certain dimensions to certain other dimensions. So it's like say for instance, uh, for whatever reason, I don't know what the height is, even though it's right there in front of me, for whatever reason, let's assume I don't. Um, if I want to make the new dimension the same dimension as the other one, all I have to do is just pick the other dimension and it automatically makes it that size. So, uh, and better than that, I can multiply it, I can tell, or divide it, or whatever. Uh, so I can say, hey, make the horizontal dimension half of whatever the first dimension is. So do divided by two. Now it's one. So, so and it's, it's, it's so ridiculously simple, and like I said, it, it's, in, it's really, really very intuitive. They've done a, a remarkable job with this one. Um, the, the best part about this is if you relate one dimension to another, uh, down the road, when you have to make a change, just change one. It'll change both. So, uh, and uh, that, that's the best thing. That's the thing I love about this program. Uh, uh, Tori, did you have a question? No? Okay. All right. I just want to make sure. All right. Um, so the next thing I need to do is I need to locate this part in space. Like I said, I want it to be centered over my origin. So I could do it this way. I could take the dimension tool, pick the origin, and then pick one of the lines and then just enter a value and say one like here if I want to put it right dead center. But it doesn't have to be even that hard. Uh, uh, let me show you an easier, an easier way to do it. Uh, next to your dimension tool, you have all these little um, uh, icons that represent constraints. Um, one of those constraints, or two of those constraints, I guess I should say, on the second row 
are horizontal and vertical constraints. So if I choose the horizontal constraint tool, I can tell stuff to be lined up horizontally. And one of the things I can pick is a midpoint of a line. So if I choose the origin, which isn't going to move because it's, it's solidly placed in my program, and I pick the midpoint on a line, notice it pops up with a green dot to indicate that's the midpoint. I tell those to be horizontally aligned, then it, it just pops that whole shape up so that it's halfway through. So I can save myself from doing about half of the dimensioning work um, that's required uh, to place the part accurately just by using those constraint tools. And uh, there's a lot of them. There's, there's a, uh, you can fix stuff in space. You can, you can make it a coincident constraint so it's directly over the top of things. You can make uh, collinear constraints, uh, concentric constraints, parallel, perpendicular, horizontal, vertical, tangent, smooth, symmetric, and equal. Um, equal is really cool because, again, you can just create one line that's like really bizarre, and you create another one and just say, hey, be like the other line, and it, and it, it turns it into that one. So really, really cool. Um, same thing for the vertical constraint. Uh, if I pick the origin and I pick the midpoint of my, my horizontal, either one of my horizontal lines, doesn't matter, top or bottom, uh, then it'll line those up as well. Before I do that, uh, and you're welcome to go ahead, but uh, uh, before I do that up here on the screen, I want you to notice something. Notice how when I uh, uh, told this to be horizontally aligned, that these two lines changed color. Uh, like they're like a darkish purple blue sort of shade now. Um, the reason it did that is because those lines are now fully defined. Um, anybody know what that means? Fully defined? All right, what, what it covers is uh, when you need to build a part, uh, if you want to make sure you have all the dimensions necessary to fully describe that part, uh, that means that that part is fully defined. There's nothing missing. Yeah, dimensions, constraints, uh, 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 make sure it's located and make sure you know the size of it. Uh, so as you, if you've got all of that stuff, the program tells you when you do. So, uh, uh, so they stay green when you first create them until they're fully defined and then they change to this like dark purple bluish sort of color. Uh, so uh, same thing here, let me click that extra point and when I do that, all the lines change to purple. Uh, and it even says down here in the, in the corner, fully constrained. So uh, it'll let you know. Now, does a part have to be fully constrained to be able to do anything with it? No, absolutely not. Um, you can build stuff without any dimensions at all if you want in this program, and it'll, it'll work just fine. But it is kind of handy to have that when, uh, uh, when you need to be able to, uh, uh, to build you know, unusual shapes and things like that. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the boring part um, where you can do sketching and stuff. Now, let's go into 3D. Uh, uh, if I click on the big green check mark in the upper uh, right hand corner uh, to finish my sketch, uh, then it takes me back into 3D mode. Zoom out a little bit so we can see it. Uh, and then notice again, up top, we've gone all automatically to the right menu. Why doesn't every software program work like this? This is, this is ridiculous. Like that, It's this stupidly simple that you just have to go to that menu, uh, choose the extrude tool, and it automatically knows what you want to extrude, and it, it applies the basic extrusion to the part uh, to begin with. Now, you can't edit, edit that extrusion, of course, and that's what this little menu that pops up is. Why it comes up minimized now, I don't know. That, that's kind of dumb, but, uh, uh, but it, it uh, does help you to, to navigate through the tool a lot faster um, uh, if you don't need to change any of the options because you can just enter a new value and whatever. Um, but the cool thing here is, is okay, uh, I want to do a d distance dimension, so let's make this a cube and change the height to 2. And, um, uh, and now if that's what I want, we're done. Um, notice I have options on, on which direction to extrude it. So if I change the direction, it'll go down instead of up. I can do a mid-plane extrusion where it'll go up 1 inch and down 1 inch. Or I can do an asymmetrical extrusion, which is kind of cool because it'll go up one direction for one value and down a direction in a different value. So uh, very, very handy uh, to be able to do. That one's a little bit more complex, and, and again, we'll get to that uh, after we do the basic stuff here. But um, in addition to being able to just do like those blind sort of extrusions that just go a direction and then stop after a set distance is achieved, you can also do uh, two other kinds of extrusions. Uh, two and between. 
And with those three options together, you can basically do almost any kind of extrusion. Um, the only program I've seen that does it better than this is SolidWorks, but, uh, uh, but this program does a remarkable job of, of, let's say you have like a surface that's got like a lot of organic structure to it, uh, and you can't extrude to that surface uh, and then uh, stop with just the direct uh, the distance extrusion. Um, but if I choose the two command, then I can just pick that unusual surface, and it'll wherever that object hits that surface, it'll stop. Um, and so you can create like shapes that are like you know nice and flowing and fluid and whatever else. So so uh, 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 pretty cool. Um, there is a more tab in here if you want to do uh, things like taper the part. Um, Anybody ever done any kind of plastic part uh, building? No. Uh, when you do that, yeah, <laughs> Dave, I know you have. Uh, <laughs> uh, when you do that, uh, in order to get the part out of a mold, it has to have a slight taper to it. Uh, otherwise, it, it will the friction of the part itself will keep it stuck inside of the mold. Um, so you have to add what they call draft onto the sides of the surface. Um, that that makes it so it's almost like a pyramidal shape. Um, it get, all the sides get smaller. If you look at any plastic part ever made, they all do that uh, because uh, uh, they all have to be done making molds right now, at least until 3D manufacturing takes over. But uh, uh, so in this case, in order to add taper, I just enter a value, and it's in degrees. So if I type in like three, then it's a three degree draft. Um, if I wanted to go in instead of out, uh, in other words, if I want the draft to go the other direction, then type in negative three, and it goes in instead of out. Uh, we don't need a, any taper on this, so I'm just going to leave it at zero. Uh, once you got all that, just hit OK, and you're, you're done building that basic part. Now, notice what's happened over on the uh, left side of your screen. Um, you have a uh, model file. Uh, it's called Part 1. That's the first thing you see, uh, and it does that by default. If you want to change the name, you just hit File, Save As, and then and you can rename it. Um, then it has a, a folder called Solid Bodies. Um, I'll get back to that one in a minute. Uh, next one down is View Master. Uh, same thing, I'll get back to that one. Uh, the next one is, is a, an important one. It's, it's called Origin. And what Origin does is uh, it tracks like your basic axes in the program. So like X, Y, and Z, as well as the, the uh, Y, Z, X, Z, and X, Y planes. So, uh, and those are those ones that we saw highlighted when we were picking a service to draw our, our profile on. So uh, uh, if you hover your mouse over any of those, you can see where they are. Uh, and you can also see the axes. Those are all extremely helpful for when you want to draw something else in your view. Um, you can pick any of those axes, to, uh, axes or planes to draw on. You can also pick any surface on any object that you've created to draw on. All right, uh, and then the next thing down is this part called extrusion one. Extrusion one is a rectangle. Uh, a cube right now, sorry. Um, let's make it a rectangle. Uh, so go into sketch one, uh, which is under extrusion one. You have to click, click the plus sign next to it. See sketch one in there? Uh, if I pick it, I can't edit it directly. What I have to do is, is right click on it and then say uh, edit sketch. Takes me right back to sketch mode and uh, let's change, uh, let me show you how the smart values work. Uh, let's change that one to uh, like uh, three and notice both of them change. Uh, and if I had divided or multiplied that value then the other value would have changed also. Uh, in fact, let's do that. Let's go ahead and divide it by, uh, uh, let's do something unusual like uh, 0.375. Okay, so the, the 3 divided by 0.375 makes that value 8. <laughs> uh, interesting. <laughs> but uh, uh, finish that sketch and your part updates. So and it's, it's just that simple. You don't have to rebuild it. You don't have to say, oh crap, I made a mistake. Start over again. Delete everything. Go from scratch. So you, you almost never use the undo button in this program. It, there is one there. You can see it up at the top, uh, very top of the program. Um, and every once in a while it comes in handy, but but it's it for almost anything you create in this software, you you if you make a mistake or it comes back later that you need to make a, a change, you, you just pick the part, open it back up, modify the sketch or the feature, and uh, go from there. 
Does anybody have any questions about that basic stuff? Yeah. Um, when I'm trying to uh, add yeah. the Okay, what's the, what's the error saying? Oh, okay. Uh, if it's been applied once already, then uh, uh, then it will give you that error. Um, if uh, if you've applied it but you're not happy with it, you can change it. But it's uh, it's important that you uh, uh, you go in and and uh, delete the constraint that's already there. Okay. So how, how do you do that? Uh, uh, let me show you. Uh, let me go back to the sketch again. Right click the edit sketch, and uh, notice that there's an option over here. Uh, sorry, called uh, Show Constraints. It's right next to the Dimension tool. If I hit Show Constraints and then just pick a surface, uh, or an, I'm sorry, an edge or a, 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 a part, anything anywhere, um, then it will uh, show me what constraints exist currently for that part. And uh, remember, I lined it up based on the midpoint. So in order to see that constraint, I have to click on the midpoint or on the origin. Um, if I once I've shown the constraints, uh, in order to remove them, all I have to do is just hit the uh, X next to it, and that, that makes them go away. And you can delete all of them if you want, but uh, there, it's not not really changing anything at this point because uh, constraints don't modify a, a part uh, uh, on their own. They have to have like some sort of input uh, where you're telling it to do something. And then can you just go again? Yeah, so if I want to constrain to the origin, uh, I'm like saying picking the horizontal uh, constraint there. Okay. And then I pick uh, one of the midpoints on a line. Okay. And if it can't work it, then it'll come up with this error here. Uh, adding this constraint will over constrain the this, this sketch. Okay. What it means by that is, is that that constraint, uh, it didn't re get removed. So uh, let me try it a different way. Um, uh, here's why. Uh, is I removed one part of the constraint, but not both of them. Okay. Um, and so I need to uh, delete it. And notice uh, it, it's it's a right click, not not the, uh, I always get that mixed up. It's, a, uh, it's not the X on it. You have to right click on it and then choose delete from the options. Um, oops. And I'm trying to get it to show up here. There we go. Um, so, uh, uh, and at that point, it'll go away. And you'll know it goes away because the geometry changes back to green. Because okay. uh, it's not fully defined anymore. So that, that's how you know. Uh, then uh, once you've got that all built the way you want, then it's just a matter of putting it back in and picking the parts that you want. Uh, I'm going to do a vertical constraint for that one. And there you go. All right. Um, the other thing I like that this thing does is it, is it automatically like uh, changes when you go to a, from 2D to 3D. It, it understands you probably want to be in like a three-quarter view, so it automatically moves you to that view when you when you exit sketch or uh, finish the sketch. Sorry. Um, some of the other cool things that you can do with this thing are uh, infinite modifications to any object. So uh, if I want to create a new part based off of this part, no big deal. Uh, choose create 2D, 2D geometry in the uh, 2D sketch, sorry, uh, in the uh, upper uh, left hand corner. And then just pick a face to draw on, doesn't matter which one. And then draw a shape, like uh, let's do like a circle there or something. And I, I can dimension it if I want, but again I don't have to. Uh, and then if I want to extrude that part, Notice that I can extrude either the outside of the sketch, like uh, this, or the inside of it. The, the reason that works that way uh, is that uh, um, it, uh, um, uh, it it gives it automatically gives you those edges for any 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 uh, surface you pick, uh, so that you don't have to recreate them. Uh, and that's again something that Inventor does that I don't see. I don't see any of their competitors doing, which which really takes it to another level. Um, now, notice here I picked both shapes, so it just looks like I'm extruding another block. So if I want to un unselect a shape, uh, then what I can do is uh, hold down the Control key on my keyboard and just pick the same part of the object again, and then that way it'll only extrude like uh, the. Uh, um, 
uh, the uh, circle part or a cylindrical part here. Uh, in addition to extruding shapes, notice that there's no cutting tools up top, uh, except for a hole um, that, that, that could be used that way. But, uh, uh, but if I tell it to cut instead of join, then it automatically knows that it needs to go down because uh, that's where the part is. Uh, and, uh, uh, and when I hit OK, it'll create a hole in the part just that easily. So uh, it's kind of hard to see with the gray on the gray background, but, but you get the idea. Um, and again, at any given point in time, whoops, I made a mistake, no problem, edit feature, change it from cut to join. You see those icons in the middle there? And then uh, just change the direction if you're not happy with the direction, and then uh, it'll create a new part. Um, occasionally, you don't want people to be killed when they're using your, your objects. Uh, <laughs> occasionally, not always. But, uh, you know, like if you're designing a knife uh, um, or a gun. Uh, but uh, 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 when, you are, uh, uh, when you don't want people to be injured using your, your parts, it's a good idea to round the edges uh, so that they, uh, uh, if they come into contact with them, they don't get sliced open, especially if you're, you're calling out aluminum as your material, uh, which is horribly vicious. Um, if you go up to the top and you choose the fillet tool, it is fillet, not fillet. I've had people call it fillet before. <laughs> Sigh. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, just pick edges, and it'll round them off uh, automatically. Uh, it defaults to a certain size. You'll notice that if you um, tell it to pick a loop instead of an edge, like it'll pick like a whole side at once, and that could be kind of handy. Um, let's see here. Let me do the bottom. Uh, you can also change dimensions as you're going through. So uh, if I want to say make all of the dimensions on the lower part, this point one two five, then that's good on that one. Uh, then let's do a, a new one. Click to add up here in the box. See the box options there? And uh, that's a new one now. And now I can change the size of it. So I can do like point five here. And now I choose a new edge, it puts a 0.5 radius on that one. And notice it's too big to fit on the part, but it didn't screw it up. Uh, it, it just cut it off where it ran out of part. So uh, that's, that's again another one of the advantages to Inventor that you won't find in a program like uh, Max or, or Alias for that matter, really mo most of every other software package that's out there. Um, so uh, I've rounded everything off now. It is now childproof. But, uh, and more importantly, it's, it's safe for people to be able to handle and, and, and uh, control. Uh, again, all those fillets are editable and adjustable. One of the cool things that you can do with a fillet is you can make them variable as well. Um, a variable fillet works like this. Uh, let me show you. Let me actually get rid of this uh, uh, fillet part. Uh, delete it. It removes the whole thing. Fillet. And uh, I'm going to do a variable fillet. Uh, and I'm just going to pick one edge to demonstrate how it works. But I want the start to be 0.5, and I want the end to be point like a 0.125 or, some, or something smaller. And then notice it gradually changes from one side to the one size to the other as it goes along. That's useful for if you're creating parts that uh, where you need a rounded edge, but then it also has to like go to a point at one end. So so like I can tell the end point to be zero here. And then uh, it goes from 0.5 to 0. Um, that's really handy. Um, you can also add points along the curve so that you can change the profile as it goes down to the end. And uh, that, that makes it possible to like kind of adjust those and, and uh, do other stuff. You, you can also delete points that you don't want. Um, notice that the values for those points are all subtly different from one another. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the uh, values are, are different. The values are the same. The positions are, are all called out as a unit of one. Even though the, that distance is eight inches, uh, it's broken down by a factor of one because each section uh, is uh, a percentage of the whole. So uh, the first point is zero, the last point is one. Uh, all the other points in the middle are, are just like I said, values, and I, I just randomly clicked 
So in addition to changing the value for each one, I can also change the position of them. So if I want it to stay 90%, or I'm sorry, stay 0.5 inches uh, up until 90% of that surface is complete, or that edge is complete, change that value to 0.9, and uh, it updates it so that it's at that position. Sorry, I hit enter to, to close it. Let me uh, go back and edit that. Um, yeah, same thing for any of the other ones. Just change their values if you want them to be different values. Values or positions. You can edit them, edit them all. And uh, you can keep going back and, and modifying stuff to adjust it. So again, like I said, it's, it's useful to, to, uh, uh, to be able to create and edit components. Does that make sense? Anybody have any trouble? Am I going too fast on this stuff? Or? Yeah? Wait, how do you make it different on one uh, You'd use a ra the variable fillet tool, which is under the fillet options. Uh, uh, start a fillet, pick an edge, uh, and then choose a variable fillet, and it'll give you like indicators for where you want to start, where you want to ed end. Excuse me. And then uh, you just go from there. Set up the parameters the way you want, and, and that's it. Okay, uh, now uh, extruding parts is uh, one way to create things, uh, but it's not the only way. Um, oops, uh, sorry, I don't want to edit that, I want to delete it. Let me show you what I mean, uh, and I'm just going back and starting from scratch here. Um, so I've started over again. <laughs> Create a 2D sketch. Again, notice my geometry all resets. Uh, this time, instead of choosing the top plane, let's choose either the front or the right plane. Uh, that's, I think, front. That's right. Doesn't really matter, though. Um, and uh, this time, let's sketch out a profile of uh, uh, something that we can revolve. Um, the thing I'm thinking of that's most common to, to do here is like a, a profile of like a, a wine glass or something like that. Uh, what was it? A bowl. A, a bowl. Yeah. Okay. A uh, bowl is a uh, is a good idea. All right. That's a, a decent one. Let's let's try it out. Um, uh, let's start with the arc tool. And uh, let's draw a line from the origin, uh, and then just go diagonally off into the corner again. Remember, on when you're doing a sketch, it doesn't matter how big or small you make it, or even if it's the right size or shape, as long as you have the right uh, object laid down, uh, that's the critical component, and then you just set up all your parameters around that. Um, so uh, that's my sort of my profile for the bowl. Um, if I want to copy that profile exactly to get the outside part of the bowl, because if I just do it this way, then it'll be it won't have any thickness to it. So uh, in order to close the shape off, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw uh, a line going from the center straight down. And then I'm going to measure that distance. And I'm going to say it's like a point uh, one two five. My bowl is an eighth of an inch thick. It's a thick bowl. Um, let's see. Uh, then uh, what I want to do is I want to offset the other line. And in this case, I'm just going to pick this this part here. And I'm going to uh, oh that didn't do it the way I wanted to, but that's all right. Uh, let me get out of that tool. Uh, watch what I'm doing up here. Uh, if I do a, a, an extend and trim, I can actually like modify the shape of the part just by using uh, those tools. So if I wanted that offset to be at 0.125, uh, all I did was just trim one part and uh, and extend the other, uh, and that that automatically reset it so that it works the way I want. Um, Next thing I want to do is maybe uh, create the side of the bowl here. So uh, in order to extrude or revolve a shape, the shape has to be closed. Uh, that's the only real requirement. Uh, once, it, once it's closed, you can create anything from it. You can extrude it, you can revolve it, you can uh, even uh, do things like lofting and sweeping and, and stuff like that uh, to create some very complex things. Um, once you've got that done, hit finish sketch and choose the revolve tool instead of the extrude tool. Then from the drop down menu uh, here, uh, this, this is this uh, dialog box, 
instead of choosing a profile, because we already got the profile selected, choose axis. Notice the red arrow that's in there. Anytime you see those red arrows, that means that it needs that information before the tool will work. So if you ever get to a point where you're in, the, in Inventor and you're trying something out, and no matter what, it's just not doing what you want it to do. So if you ever come across that situation, just look for the, open the menus and look for the red arrows. That's what it still needs. So choose that red arrow and then pick the axis you want to revolve around. And once you do that, you've got your bolt. And like I said, it's enormously thick, but that's all right. It's China or something. Yeah. <laughs> or wood, maybe. I don't know. All right. Um, so those two tools together, the extrude and the revolve, those do, uh, again, about 90% of the, the lifting and the heavy lifting in this program. Um, the more you mess with that stuff, uh, th those two tools, the better uh, you'll get it at pretty much everything they, they can do. So, uh, can you show again yeah. how to uh, extend the arc down? Yeah, uh, if you want to do a, uh, an offset part. Yeah, yeah sure. Um, to edit the sketch here, and I'll just I'll just create it again. Right, I'm going to do it a different way this time, just to make it easier. Uh, Let's, uh, let's offset just this one line. Um, uh, I'm in the sketch. I'm editing it. Uh, go up to the top to the Modify menu on the ribbon. And you'll notice the Offset tool is the one on the far right there. Okay. Then pick the line you want to offset. Uh -huh. And you can just drag it out to determine like how far you want it to be uh, or how thick you want the part to be. Uh, that works fine. You can even give it a dimension just by picking both of them and then clicking to place the dimension. So like uh, right now it's 0 .05. If I want it to be a sixteenth of an inch thick, that would be 0 .0625 and hit enter. And uh, now it's it's adjusted the size out so that, that the value between the two two is uh, 0 .06. It's rounding it up to 0 .063, but it's, it's, uh, it's 0 .0625. All right, then, then I'm, all I'm doing from that point uh, to create the bowl shape is just closing off the geometry. I did that a little bit different way that time, but, uh, uh, but it, that works the same way. Now, uh, notice that this time when I tried to finish the sketch, that it came up with an error when it tried to update the part. Uh, the reason for that was that, that the original um, sketch defined uh, the part in a different way. Uh, using different lines. So when I deleted those lines, that, that definition went away. Um, so I now have to tell it, like, hey, you know, what, uh, uh, what sketch is Revolution 1 using? So you can do Edit Feature and just, uh, again, look for the red arrows, pick the one you need, and hit OK. And that's it. And it, it just resets that simply. Yeah, sorry. Tori? Uh, to revolve it, you mean? Yeah, okay, uh, let me do that one more time. Um, okay, so uh, what I want to do is I want to create my, my revolved shape. So uh, uh, I, I've got my sketch profile. It has to be closed, like I said. Uh, does that make sense? Everybody know what closed means? Um, that, what that, that indicates is that, that the geometry has to connect to itself to create a, a, an enclosed space. Um, so uh, if, if it's a square, that's no problem because it's already closed. But if you're just doing like line segments, you just have to make sure that the start meets back up with the start. So uh, in this case, uh, because I've got a closed shape, I can now revolve this object. So I'm choosing revolve up at the top. That's under the create tab uh, over on the left. And then it already picks the profile that I need. So the only thing that it still needs is to pick the axis about which to revolve it. So uh, notice that's the red arrow on this menu here. So look for that red arrow. If, if you ever, like I said, if you ever get stuck when you're trying to build a part, look for the red arrows. 
and click on them and then pick the thing that you need to be the axis. So in that case, it's the center of my bowl. Right. And then when you pick it, it does does it entirely. Now it is possible to do a uh, an angular extrusion. Uh, I'm sorry, revolution. Um, so you don't have to go around full 360 degrees. You can just do like a, a quarter of that, or or just a, an angle of any size. Um, you can also go between parts or uh, full again. Like I said, that, that just goes around in a loop um, and uh, in a circle and uh, goes from there. Okay, um, so that's some of the simple, like the basic tools in this program. Um, th there's a lot more to them, and, 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 but they all basically work that same way. And like I said, anytime you create a new object, it creates history for that object over on the left side of your screen. To edit that history, you just go to the feature you want to change. If, if you need to edit the sketch, hit the plus sign. If you need to uh, edit the feature, uh, then just click on it, right click on it, and choose Edit Feature. Uh, and there's a lot of options in this menu, but really there's only about three or four uh, selections that, that really make any difference. So uh, Edit Feature, Edit Sketch, and Delete. Those are the ones that I use more often than anything. Okay, so uh, Rocky, you got here just in time. Uh, let's take about... Uh, 15 minute break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, if you want to grab some food that's over there, we don't want to take it home today, so go you know, finish it. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, it, and I'll answer questions before we, we leave here. All right. It's orange. Uh, is it giving you errors? It doesn't say no. Yeah, uh, I'll come back and check it because I'm not sure what's going on with that one. But, but yeah, Dave, you had a question? Just wondering if you wanted to. Um like revolve a really complex shape. Let's yeah. Like a spline or something like that. What are the limitations on um, revolve? Does it have to be like a closed geometric figure? It, it just has to be a closed geometric figure. As long as you got it closed, it'll it'll revolve just about anything. So, so uh, you can do thin revolves, like so it creates just a surface, but uh, uh, but that works a little bit in a little bit of a different way, uh, and it'll actually come up and warn you. It's a, it'll say, hey. And I'm thinking that maybe what's going on with Tori's is is that her shape isn't quite closed. It's it's very easy to to not quite snap to this to the surface that you want, and it looks like it, but it's just like a hair off. Uh, and then when it's not closed, it doesn't it doesn't interpret that as a solid object. So you have to go back and, and fix it. Yeah, yeah, X, Y, or Z. Uh, and uh, when you're setting it up, uh, you, you just basically choose the axis you want. Um, and uh, uh, based on geometry that exists. If you don't have geometry for whatever reason, um, you can uh, use the axes in your, in your window. So uh, X, Y, or Z. Cool, okay. So uh, it's about 2.20 uh, now. Um, let's meet back here about uh, uh, 2.35 or so. And then uh, uh, we'll get back into this and start looking at, at building assemblies um, and constraining parts so that they work well with one another. So, so okay. And I'll come over and I'll check out your your story. But I, I think that's probably with it. Is it may just not be quite snapped to one another. I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, ooh, no, it looks like it's all right. It. it uh, uh, no, okay. See, see how it says revolution surface. Um, that indicates that it, it couldn't find either couldn't find a closed shape or um, uh, or it uh, uh, or, or we picked a different tool. So well, let's check it out here. Um, try it this first. Um, yeah, and that's a good warning. Anytime it doesn't automatically pick the profile, that's a good indication that there's probably just a point slightly off someplace. Usually, it's something really really subtle like that. Mm -hmm. You know. So uh, to, to fix it, all you got to do is go into the sketch, make sure you're editing it. Oops, I zoomed in. Okay.
ready? Okay, so uh, what I had those guys in the back do is a, uh, um, um, no, I don't want to say that, is uh, load some of the uh, the parts for the uh, kit up onto uh, my, my uh, network drive here. And uh, I'm going to try and go see if I can download it. Uh, going to get to the network first, though. Should be popping up. Takes a little bit to load. There we go. And uh, this is main 219. Come on. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see. We got some Legos in here. We got all kinds of stuff. What's in the Lego folder? Oh, no. It's in the, uh... Oh, that's funny. Did you want to get to the part that I'm at right now? Uh, yeah, eventually, but I also wanted to kind of see what was... Just get a feel for what's out there, but... Um, that's kind of cool. This is an homage to the FLL stuff. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. That's a cool idea. Sweet. Okay, so uh, one of the challenges when you're when you're building a part uh, that you're importing files for uh, in the software is you don't have the same flexibility uh, with editing the parts themselves uh, as as you were discovering when you were trying to break that part down. It was deleting services you didn't want to delete. Um, they uh, uh, in most cases. Uh, if you need to modify parts, you probably should rebuild them um, in in Inventor so that uh, uh, you have a chance to uh, uh, fully edit them and, and tweak them the way you want them to. Uh, otherwise, you'll probably run into issues with, with just like uh, things falling apart. Notice on this one over here, even though it's a part that has all these complex features on it, there's nothing over there under the uh, model tree. Um, uh, it just says base one. Uh, there's no components to it. There's no anything. So I, I can't break that down. I can't edit any part of it. What I can do is I can take existing parts and I can uh, put them together so they fit with one another. Um, that's what it does really well. Uh, and I wanted to cover that. So yeah. Okay. Can you delete the model tree? Say, uh, delete the model tree? Yeah, I oh, okay. Uh, you need to get back. Um, if you go to view, okay. uh, user interface, in the middle, uh, and then choose on. Uh, it actually called a browser, so just click click the browser. Okay. Yeah, that'll bring it back. Um, let's see here. Uh, ah, stop hitting new. Okay, so uh, uh, what what's the part you're working on back there with the? Uh, the channel. The channel. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So again, same thing. Uh, not much I can do uh, with the uh, part itself. Um, it's trying to open Inventor Fusion uh, in order to modify it. Y you can allow that, but Inventor Fusion, like I said, is an entirely different program. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, while we're doing that, let me uh, let me move on to, to doing uh, uh, constraints uh, on objects in 3D space because, like I said, that that's primarily what you'll use uh, Inventor for it, it is to build um, representations of what you want your robot to look like, uh, and then figure out what parts you still need to to make. Um, so, uh, in order to start this off, what you need to do is, is basically just uh, uh, you, you want to start a new file, not not open an existing one. Uh, Make sure in the English option, and then in the second uh, row of uh, uh, possible formats to open, choose the standard parentheses in dot iam. Uh, it looks like three blocks stacked on top of each other, uh, and then uh, go ahead and, and just double click that or, hit, or click it and hit create. All right, and then uh, th this is uh, assembly mode. It looks almost exactly like part mode except that the tools at the top are different. So uh, 
Uh, notice that you, you don't currently have a place tool. It's, it's located under the place uh, from Content Center. Uh, the Content Center is great. It's a, it's a, a uh, library of files that comes with Inventor that's like all your basic uh, nuts and bolts. Um, you don't need to make them or design them yourself or even look for them in the kit of parts. You just you say, here's the size of my hole and I want a carriage head screw and it, it figures out where the, the part needs to go. Uh, and uh, uh, and it, it, it's really amazing. It, it does a, a very nice job with it. Um, in fact, I, I can show you how it works real quick if you want to see. Um, let's, let's place uh, one of those uh, um, channels in there. Uh, grab that from the desktop. Okay, so when you start in assembly mode, uh, it initially plates, places one copy of whatever file you open, uh, or, or rather place. Um, when it does that, it, uh, uh, it also assumes that you may need more than one of those. Uh, so it gives the option of placing a second one. So if you keep clicking, you'll cl keep placing multiple parts. Uh, that's a good way to get a lot of parts built in your scene right away. But uh, in most cases, we may only need one one copy of something. So, um, if I want to place a bolt in here that fits in those holes, then what I can do is go to Place from Content Center. Remember, that's up in the upper left hand corner. Uh, you got to drop the the arrow down and then choose from Content Center. Uh, log in here, and then uh, in this case, let's choose fasteners. So let's do like a bolt. Uh, let's do hex head bolts, those are, are fairly common. Uh, either those are like uh, round head machine screws or, or something like that. But uh, you just have to choose the type of bolt you want. Um, these are all based on ANSI and ISO standards. Uh, if you open a file uh, in uh, inch, uh, uh, in inches, or uh, uh, English I should say, uh, uh, then it, it typically tries to give you like inch, inch uh, uh, options. If you open a file in in metric, then it gives you metric options for your bolts. But there are there is some crossover, so that you can get one of each. Notice that none of the sizes are listed here. It's all just bolt descriptions. So look for the one that looks right. The, the normal ones are usually up near the top. Um, this one's a metric one though, so I'm going to look for the first one that says inch. Pick that bolt and hit OK. When when you come back into your window, all you have to do is just pick an edge where you want uh, that bolt to go, and it figures out what size it should be. Huh. And uh, uh, and then you can tell it which size you want it to be and, and which which direction it should go. You can also tell it how long it should be. So uh, all of that is all all done just in this very quick, uh, very painless sort of uh, operation here. Once you got it all called out right. Um, you can even go back in and say, okay, now find me a, a nut that will work with this bolt. Um, so a uh, bolted connection is the option for that. Um, and uh, it does want you to save the file before you can do that. Uh, that's fine. Just hit save so please. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm going to go back here and choose where I want it to go. And I need to give it a linear edge, so I'm trying to find one that'll work here. Uh, you know what? That's more than I want to do right now. Let's just try. The, oops. Uh, let's just try placing that bolt in there. And uh, it even lets you uh, adjust like uh, values like the, the designation for the bolt, uh, or, or it pulls this up so you can write them down. So uh, uh, it, in this case, that hole was 5 16 by, uh, and the uh, bolt length needs to be 1 and 3 quarters. Uh, the thread length uh, per inches is, is uh, 0.875, but I could have changed that. Uh, if you're happy with those results, hit OK, and it'll build the bolt, and it'll set it up so you can start building the next one, too. Again, if I want to keep placing the same kind of bolt, uh, then I can keep doing that. If I pick an edge uh, or a, a hole 
that's too small, there, are, there aren't bolts available in that size, uh, which is, again, all based off of, of uh, uh, ANSI standards, um, which is an organization that decided, you know, what size bolts there should be in existence. Um, then it'll come up like this and it'll tell you. And it'll say, you can't, you can't use that bolt because there's not one available in that size. And uh, that way, if you go to Home Depot and you try and buy that bolt, you won't be pissed off that say, damn it, let me do that. But, you know, <laughs> but it's not a real bolt. So, so all the bolts here are real. Uh, they, they actually can be purchased pretty much at any hardware store. All right. Um, so anyways, those are bolts. But uh, what I want to do is I want to show you uh, uh, how to do uh, connections like this that uh, um, uh, between parts. So uh, let me place another component in here. All right, and uh, let's do like two of those guys. Uh, so let's say I want to want to fix these guys in space, uh, and I want them to relate to one another, um, uh, so that they they match, um, so that I can I can uh, uh, see what my robot's going to look like. Um, so first things first is is I would. Uh, uh, decide what orientation each part needs to have. Um, there, there's probably stuff that makes sense uh, that I'm sure I'm not aware of because uh, uh, it's been a while since I, I used to judge FTC competitions, but it, it's been a while since I did that. So, so anyway, uh, if you're doing like the chassis for your robot, then uh, uh, you may decide you want like you know longer pieces attached to shorter pieces, and how they connect together is in, done in a certain way. Um, in this case, I'm not. I'm not dealing with that. I'm just showing you how to get the parts to mate with each other. Um, and uh, the way to do that is uh, up at the top, notice how you have this constraint tool. Click to open that. There really only is about one uh, or two settings in this tool, but for whatever reason, they make it look a lot harder than it actually is. Um, uh, the type of mate that you, or type of uh, uh, constraint that you want is mate. Uh, almost always, uh, and if you want the parts to be uh, aligned with each other, make sure you choose the solution that where they're aligned. If you want them to uh, face each other, then make sure you choose the solution that, that says mate. Um, so, uh, uh, for instance, uh, now I can go down and I can say I want this part here, watch this, uh, this face, to be in line with this face here. Now that moves it over there, but notice it's still not aligned top to bottom. In fact, the parts are actually overlapping right now. Um, that's not what I want, obviously. Uh, but uh, notice that I can now take that part. Uh, let me apply that so I, I get it set. Um, and I can now move that part around, but it's, uh, it's moving so that it's staying in line with that. So, uh, uh, so all I have to do, uh, again, if I, is just grab those two together and apply that constraint. Um, now if I want them to butt up against one another, what I can do is change the solution to mate, and I can say, okay, pick that face, turn it around, and pick the same, uh, the, the adjoining face on the other part, and now that one is lined up. Now, yeah, lovely noise, but it, it uh, yeah, that's the sound it makes when it constrains a part. It's like, oh, holy crap, it fits. Uh, but uh, uh, now notice it's, it's getting closer as I'm adding these constraints. It's getting approximately closer to what I need. Uh, it takes about three in most cases to get stuff aligned, uh, aligned with each other. But then once you do, they're permanently in place. Notice that when I try and move that part now, I can't because it's constrained. So uh, uh, in this part, the original part, whatever you put in first, that part is grounded. Everything else uh, mates with it. So in, it, it's, it's the same thing as, as you know, uh, being grounded by your parents. You, you can't do anything. You can't go anywhere. It, it doesn't let you move anywhere. So, so yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Um, okay, so uh, do a constraint. And uh, when you pick an edge of a hole, like a, a surface on that hole, it shows the axle, uh, uh, the, uh, sorry, the axis for that hole. So just pick one on one part, and the corresponding one you want on the other part. Uh, let's try uh, one that actually matches. Uh, uh, let's try that one. All right, that's it. 
Right, now, again, remember, it, it only does one constraint at a time. So, right, so I have, to, I have to tell it that I want it to also be aligned with other things. So if I want it to be aligned like this, then I can do that. Now it only moves back and forth, doesn't rotate anymore. And if I do a mate where this face goes against the one on the other side, I have to move my part around so I can see the other side. Uh, that's uh, that one. Then, then now it's fully, fully defined. Now constraints can be annoying because they're easy to get wrong, um, and uh, it's not so easy to undo them. It, it's not that bad, but it's it's just not not straightforward enough, in my opinion. Um, in order to remove a constraint, you actually have to go in to the part itself uh, over here on the model tree on the left hand side, and pick the constraint you didn't like, right click on it and choose delete. And when you do that, like it starts getting its degrees of freedom back. Uh, that's what they actually call them in this program is degrees of freedom. And the more you delete, uh, the more freedom it has to, to do whatever you need it to do. I prefer using the constraint tool over the assemble tool, but, but the assemble tool does a lot of the same kinds of things. Um, it just doesn't, the reason I like the constraint tool better is because it gives you more control over what's happening, um, and whereas the uh, assemble tool kind of doesn't. Uh, notice there's no drop down menu for it. It just, uh, when you choose it, it just lets you choose parts and stuff. So, so I, I, and that's, again, it's personal preference. You can use either one, but yeah. Uh, I, I deleted the constraint that had that fixed, so I just need to put that constraint back in. So, uh, like, let's say, uh, uh, if I want them to be aligned, uh, that would be this one. And I could choose either top part, uh, and I can choose uh, a mate solution, and then choose each of those faces. And, and then, again, like I said, that's fully constrained. Um, those two holes are lined up, and hence the ones right next to them are as well. But... Uh, uh, but that's that's the easiest way to apply those assemblies. And uh, they, they will stay put. Um, occasionally you don't want to do all those constraints. Like let's say you want a part that actually can rotate, uh, like a gear. Um, you wouldn't want to you won't want a gear locked in place entirely. You just want it to be on an axle and maybe lined up with a surface. Uh, but in that case, you just leave off the constraint that prevents it, or that, that you have that prevents it from rotating, and that that provides that solution. Uh, other questions on on assemblies? There's a lot to, to go there, but yeah. Shown earlier, like how you can have it pick out a hole for something that fits in a hole. How are you doing that? Yeah, uh, that's place from content center. The content center. Uh, it, uh, when you buy the program, and, and I don't know about the trial edition, I think it comes also with the content center. I, I haven't checked it lately. Um, but uh, uh, when you go into the content center, you can place files from, uh, I'm sorry, bolts from uh, the uh, files you're supplied with. And, and they're all like just like standard bolt sizes. So, uh, or a standard bolt, sorry. Um, so like, uh, uh, and it has everything. I showed you the, the uh, hex head bolts, but that's just the hex head ones. It's also got like, you know, machine screws and, and uh, coarse fit thread versus fine thread breakdowns and, and uh, all different lengths, um, just, just all kinds of different options. So, okay, but you have to know what size you want to put in there. Not necessarily, cause, because when you, when you pick the bolt, you just pick the hole you want it to go into and then it determines what size to make it. So uh, and that's the part that I like about the inventor. Yeah, it's really cool. So it makes it makes it idiot proof. Really, you, you don't have to. You don't you don't have to know. You know. Idiot resistant. Thing. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, in uh, idiot resistant, <laughs> the uh, uh, the thing that I've found about this software is that uh, not many companies use Inventor. Uh, more companies use Inventor than than use Max, but because uh, of its obvious like. Uh, 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 applications in like manufacturing things like that, but uh, uh, but almost everyone these days uses SolidWorks, which is a, a very similar program. But I'm um, I'm surprised that SolidWorks is is uh, uh, is more widely used because 
inventor is made by Autodesk. I mean, it's the same company that's made AutoCAD, and and that's a trusted name from like back in the 70s. So, so, uh, 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 so it they've been around for forever, but but it just hasn't caught on really. I mean, it's it's not taken off the way that that SolidWorks has, um, and. Uh, a lot of companies here in town, like uh, Ethicon Endosurgery, uses Alias uh, to do their their service modeling, and uh, uh, SolidWorks to do their their their, their uh, manufacturable parts. So, so uh, and uh, and most companies, because the software is so outlandishly expensive, you know, you're looking at five grand just to buy the software. So, uh, uh, that makes it, you know, you have to make a choice, <laughs> and uh, when you have to make a choice, you you pick the program that can do everything. So. So, and uh, right now that's how it works. So, um, one of the coolest things that I've I've seen in that that you can do in assembly mode is, let's say I want to build a custom part uh, around the existing parts that are already in my scene. You can do that uh, in this directly in assembly mode. You don't have to start a new file. You just go in and say create a new part and you tell it what service to start building it on and you can even grab geometry from the other existing parts that are in your scene and use them for reference uh, uh, so if I wanted like to create a, a uh, uh, like a hinge or a bracket that lined up with uh, these two parts here um, I could do that very easily just by uh, hitting create new part picking the service I wanted to start building it on and then and then uh, making it uh, building it up from the file that, or the stuff that's there. Uh, you guys interested in seeing that or? Yeah. All right. All right. So uh, uh, instead of choosing place, you choose create, and you can give it a part name to begin with if you want. Uh, in this case, it doesn't really matter, so I'm just going to let it go with the default part two. Uh, and then I have to choose a location to build it on. Uh, and that can be either one of these services, let's just say, because I'm going to build a bracket that connects the two of them together. Um, it doesn't matter which one you build it on, but uh, uh, but I picked that one because, uh, I don't know, we got leanings to the left. No, I, <laughs> no, I, there's, there's no real value in it. Um, notice that when uh, you do that, it automatically takes you back into inventor part mode. Um, so you're now able to build a 2D sketch or extrude features that are already there or do whatever. So let me create a 2D sketch here um, and let me sketch on uh, uh, an existing service if I can. Yeah. And then I'm going to uh, build a rectangle that lines up with the edges of the part. Um, in order to do this I need to project geometry. So I'm going to project that edge and this edge. Uh, and that way I have edges that I can snap to. Then I can start building parts that connect together just by drawing the shape out. Uh, I can even project geometry of like holes. So if I want a hole in this part and I want it to align with those holes, I just pick those holes and it, and it, it pops into my sketch. Uh, I can do the vertical and horizontal alignment like I had been doing so, uh, so I made sure it's centered. So like say those guys and uh, the centers of the holes. There we go, now it's centered. Uh, if I want to choose the uh, the length of the line, you gotta make sure I pick the right one. That's where it comes in handy to be able to pick the different parts. What the heck did I do? <laughs> I managed to hit the help file somehow, sorry. Uh, and uh, it's not, it's, it's a little bigger than, a, than one inch, so I'm just gonna take it down to one inch. And uh, if I need to round the edges to make it look like the other parts in there, I can do that. Uh, and uh, that's under the fillet. This is a sketch fillet tool. So uh, it lets you do uh, sketch fillets just, just the same way that you can do them in, uh, um, in uh, uh, the uh, regular mode, but, but they're not part of any actual geometry. It's just a sketch. All right, uh, finish that sketch and extrude that part. Uh, tell how thick I want that bracket to be. If I want it to be really strong, I can make it an inch, but I probably don't need it that strong. So 0 0.0625, not very efficient. So uh, I'll make it a sixteenth of an inch, which is probably what the other parts are. And now I've got a brand new part that lines up perfectly with the other parts that are in my scene. 
Um, and when I'm done, I just hit return. It takes me right back into, into assembly mode. And I've got my new part. Uh, I also have a, a work plane that I, I built in order to locate the, uh, the location for the sketch. So when I'm done with that work plane, uh, I can turn off the visibility for it by right clicking on the plane and choosing visibility. Then it goes away and now you've got uh, that part in place, looks complete. Um, and uh, we can go from there. Yeah. Can you talk a little more what project geometry means? Project geometry takes geometry from other parts of your file and, and repurposes it for the sketch you're currently working on. So uh, project geometry is awesome, in other words. <laughs> it, uh, yeah, uh, what, I, what I've been using it for uh, more than anything is, is uh, um, uh, occasionally I'll come across a situation where I, I need to reference something that already exists in the world. And that's what I was doing with those holes, was I, I wanted to make sure they were the same size, and I didn't want to have to sit there and guess. So why guess when I can just grab it out of, uh, out of the part that already has that hole built and sized? But is that projection just like a die, or is it actually going to be... It's actual geometry. So, so yeah, it, 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 con it converts uh, a reference to actual real geometry. And uh, you can u also use it as reference as you want, if you want. Like, so I, can take those, I could take those holes and I could just create a, uh, uh, a, a construction line version of the hole on my drawing and then trace that, but, but you don't need to. Point, like when you hide it, it wouldn't be in your final. You, you can do that. You can do it either way. So, so you can do either a reference geometry or actual physical geometry. So, yeah. Can you show again how you snap uh, the parts to the holes and the particle of the length of the hole? Yep, right. And that, that's what he's talking about is the project, uh, uh, project geometry okay. tool. Um, so uh, let's do something else. Uh, um, try to think what else I could build on this thing. Um, let's build a bracket that, that surrounds these brackets. Uh, uh, well, no, you want to see the whole thing, though. Um, yeah, all right, uh, let's just do a... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think what I want. <laughs> I'm running out of places to build. Just, like, make that part of yeah, I could do that. All right, let's, I want to. I want to be more creative than that. But <laughs> okay. Uh, so first step is to create a new part. Um, so you don't you don't place anything else. You're in assembly mode. But you don't place anything else. You just hit create, give it a name, uh, hit OK, and then tell it where you want to build it. So I'm picking a surface that I can sketch on. Then uh, I go. I automatically revert to uh, inventor part mode. So I'm no longer in assembly mode, I'm now in part mode. Uh, and I, all I have to do is just pick a, a tool to be able to start creating. In this case, I'm going to uh, create a 2D sketch of my, my geometry. It, it automatically doesn't see any parts in this file, so it goes back to that, that little axis thing. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a surface to sketch on, and it's going to be one of those top two uh, services. doesn't really matter which one. I, I built, picked the other one last time, so I'll pick this one this time. Um, then, in order to uh, get uh, information, like, like for example, if I try and build geometry now, mm -hmm. like I can't snap to any of those edges. Like it just, it, you can eyeball it, you can get it close, but you can't snap to it perfectly. So what I'm doing instead is I'm projecting the geometry and saying, hey, use that edge and use this edge because that's how big I want to make my part. Okay. Then I can snap to that edge that's been projected. Uh, and uh, and then I just like uh, fix or build my piece, uh, adjust it to the size I need, and make any adjustments that I need. I, I'm also uh, projecting the holes uh, because in this case I want the holes to be uh, in there too. Um, the last step I did was I, I aligned everything, so I did a horizontal constraint with the holes on the geometry uh, uh, in relation to the uh, the midpoint of the vertical walls of my uh, my rectangle. Um, and that, that made sure that the part was centered around the holes. And then I dimensioned this, and I gave it a value of 1. And then, like I said, I didn't want a sharp part that was going to cut people and, and uh, cause problems. I, I, I filleted the, the edges. And I just went with the default, which is uh, uh, 0.125.
it looked pretty close to what's on the other parts. So, yeah, it's the only reasoning behind it. Um, extrude that piece then, and I, I decided that that, that was, uh, part was extruded uh, uh, point, uh, zero 0.065. And uh, i got to make sure I choose the right part. And that's it. And it, once you got the part made, just return to the original the original assembly. And uh, I turned off the visibility on my work plane to make it look like like it did before. Right, and that, that's how you build new parts in assembly mode. When you go to save, it'll ask you if you want to save everything. Um, so you just have to go in and say yes or no, uh, depending on, on what you want to do. All right. Um, okay. So the the uh, the last part of this uh, that I want to cover today is I want to get through uh, doing um, drawing files. Uh, uh, the reason I want to cover this uh, it sounds kind of dry, but the reason I want to cover it is because when you create custom parts, uh, the shop floor will need uh, the people that are working to build the parts will need drawings that help them to create it and if you just give them a picture of your part that's not good enough uh, you have to give them a drawing with dimensions on it and stuff uh, the cool thing about uh, uh, inventor is just like everything else in this program it's super simple to do uh, you've got your part created you just basically place the views of the part onto a sheet and then have it auto dimension everything um, and it, it does almost everything right the first time occasionally you have to fix a few things so that's what I wanted to cover but uh, more than you guys probably need a break, I need to not talk for about 15 minutes. <laughs> so uh, if we can do uh, about 3.30, uh, come back here, and then, uh, then we'll finish that off. If, if you do want to see the 3D printer, we could run down there now. It's not too far away. So, so uh, as a simple example, I'll use that part that we just printed. Um, uh, and uh, again, uh, the first step is to start a new document choose the drawing format, which is, in this case, is the third row down. Uh, and it's an ANSI drawing format uh, because we're in inches. Uh, ANSI is an American standard uh, uh, company uh, that decides what size everything should be, including screws and nuts and bolts and stuff like that. Uh, uh, and so all of the measurements and values are based on ANSI standards. Um, pick that option, uh, hit create. The, uh, uh, IDW, right, sorry. Uh, um, and uh, what this does is it brings up a sheet um, uh, bl that's blank. Uh, if, you, if, uh, if, if you haven't uh, fit anything in yet, uh, then it just looks like this. Um, but uh, what we want to do is we want to bring in the and just place it in there. So really simple. Go to base. Yeah, thanks. Nice. Thanks for coming in. Um, so, uh, and then you just choose the view that you want. Now you notice you can adjust like the size of it. So it's currently full scale, um, but I can also choose to change that size if I prefer. Uh, it can be bigger uh, if my sheet is bigger and it accommodates that. When I place my base part in the view, then I can just drag up to place the top, the side, and the, the, or the, uh, uh, and the uh, isometric view and hit create and they're all created. Um, to, to do that drawing that would take a, a regular quality draftsman probably about a half an hour. So you just did it in five seconds. Um, and uh, it's uh, really phenomenal. I mean it, it just absolutely does everything you need right there and, and it's in scale. So if you printed this out full size then the, the person creating the part could just actually put it up against the, uh, uh, or get out the ruler, sorry, take, uh, uh, measure the part, reduce every measurement by half, and that part would print just fine. Um, in addition to uh, placing parts in here, you can also annotate them, meaning uh, uh, adding dimensions and stuff. Uh, one of the cool things is that you can automatically retrieve dimensions for the parts. So uh, you can do that using the retrieve tool. You pick a view, and then uh, in order to select the dimensions, you just tell it to show the dimensions you have available. Uh, in this case, there are two in this view. Tell it you want both of them. 
Then go up to the top view, do the same thing, retrieve. Oops, sorry, I picked the view first. There's the thickness. Apply, and then the last one, let's see if we got a height here or something, or width. Um, And I don't see anything on that view. Okay, all right, so uh, uh, so it'll bring in most of them, but if you didn't initially create dimensions when you were creating your part, then it won't have dimensions available to you to use here. So uh, so what you have to do is you actually have to like draw the dimensions in manually. No problem, zoom in using the mouse, click the lines, and then just drop that dimension in there. Uh, and again, you don't have to know what the value is, you just have to know how big it, it needs to be. Be careful not to double dimension anything. If, if you have the dimension in one view, uh, or one part, you do not need it again. So uh, we've got the, the overall width, we've got the overall height, and we've got the overall uh, thickness or depth. Uh, and that's a, a 2.52 wide, uh, one inch tall, and uh, 0 0.06 inches thick. Uh, there's a couple of things we need to mention. The, ho the holes are both the same, so uh, I just measured one of them. Um, a typical thing to do, like a standard to know how to do, is, is when you place a, a dimension only for a single hole, but there are two holes, type in TYP after the value. What that means is that's typical. So if there's another hole that looks like it's the same size, it means it is. Um, same thing over here on the radius, you can do the, exactly the same thing. Um, and just uh, the double brackets means that it's pulling the dimension from the actual part. If you want it to tell somebody to make that dimension a different value, first of all, tell them that the, the drawing is not to scale, and then change that value so that it, it's whatever you want it to be uh, on the actual part. So you don't actually have to go back and correct something in here. But, uh, uh, but that's important to, to know. So uh, TYP again, uh, to just to make sure that it's, uh, people know that it's, it's that radius on all four corners. Um, let's say I want the, the isometric view to be in color because it'll look better. Um, let's try this. Uh, oops, I, sorry, I picked the wrong thing. Um, I'm going to... Uh, uh, remember where this is, sorry. Uh, edit view, sorry, I had to find it. <laughs> uh, and then uh, at the bottom over here, you can choose the type of callout you want, or a type of uh, uh, representation you want. You can do hidden lines, you can do uh, hidden lines removed, which is what it currently is, or you can do shaded. Uh, shaded would be the best representation, so uh, turn that on, and it'll take on the properties of whatever I have loaded into the parts. So uh, uh, it does quite a bit there. Um, the other thing that you, you frequently need to know how to do is to adjust this, this box down here in the corner. Um, I want to uh, uh, like change what it says. It, it automatically says on all of yours Joshua.Haldeman because it uses the login information for your computer to populate those fields. So obviously you don't want that. So uh, uh, if you go to uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, model tree up at the top, where it says ANSI large, click the plus sign next to that, and that pops up a, an area called field text. Uh, double click field text, and this is weird. This is a really confusing tool. It's the only one that I, it's one of the only ones in this program that I don't like, uh, but in this, in this area here, in order to edit these fields, you have to pick one of them first, doesn't matter which one. Then you get this little like tabbed, uh, icon looking thing uh, that's the properties option that's what you pick on to change what it says there so uh, that's really bizarre uh, so change who the author is if you want to insert a company uh, if you're doing this stuff for Walnut Hills type in Walnut Hills uh, if you want to put in like project details you can do that here uh, we don't have a lot of project details we just have uh, our name and uh, you can call the part something if you want um, and uh, uh, and then just apply that, and when you apply it and close it, you have to close it, uh, then it updates what's in that field, uh, the field boxes at the bottom. Like I said, the more stuff you enter, the, the more that, that will fill in down there. 
All right, uh, save it. And uh, let me show you the, the best part about this one. This, this is two sides, right? On the, on the, uh, the Say it again. It's two sides of your part, the same size of your part. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, well, it's it's the uh, remember when we we printed the actual part out, we scaled it down. Yeah. So I have no idea how big that one is. I think it was like half the size it was supposed to be. Okay. But uh, in this case, it's uh, it's it's again, it's twice the size that it should be um, uh, because we we doubled the size of the of the uh, part so it would fit better on our sheet. Uh, I did top, front, and right side views of the parts, which is typical, uh, and an, and then that isometric view. And notice, like, I didn't have to pick what view went where. When I pl placed my base view, it figured out what part should be going or showing up on the top and what part should be showing up on the right there. Um, now, here, here's the cool part. Uh, go back to your, if I go back to my part file here, let, let me bring it up so I can see it. Uh, let me edit the sketch and let me change one of these values. Uh, let, let me get rid of this stuff here. Um, I might not need to, but uh, here I'll tell you what, turn it into construction lines. Um, let's say I want those holes to be bigger. I didn't dimension them right. Uh, so, uh, ah crap, I can't can't change them because they're, uh, uh, I'll, I'll just create some, no, I don't want to do that either. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, I'll I do make this easy because like I said, I don't want to keep you guys here until midnight. Um, uh, change this value where it says 1 currently to something else, like uh, let's do 1.5, so it's not dramatically bigger. Alright, so now it's thicker here. Finish the sketch, it updates the part, hit save, go back to your drawing. Anybody see it? See how it updated the drawing too? It, it, I didn't do anything to the drawing. All I did was change the, the part and save it. And it automatically updated the drawing. So that's called save it once, save it anywhere. And it's amazing. Uh, it, 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 if you're in assembly mode and you see the part doesn't fit right, change it and save the file. It updates the part file, it updates the drawing file, it updates everything. So uh, uh, it's a really a nice, nice feature to have when you're trying to build parts that... Uh, uh, that you need to work. <laughs> uh, if you're just building pretty pictures, that, that's great, but it doesn't do, do the job when you have to actually have a, a functioning robot. So, so uh, um, uh, today's uh, course is, is meant to be an introduction to uh, all of the tools that you have available to you in both of these programs. Uh, it's a very broad, uh, not very deep overview, as you probably have noticed. Um, and uh, I'd encourage you guys to uh, to really get into it and explore it as much as you can um, uh, to get a good handle on what it really can do when the power is behind it. Um, in the process of doing this, I don't I don't expect that it's an easy thing. Um, I would anticipate, in fact, uh, uh, having quite a few difficulties with it. Um, uh, if you can uh, I make use of the tutorials in the program to help you. Those will definitely give you a much more in-depth understanding of how all the tools work. Um, if you uh, can find videos on YouTube, like heck, go for it. Uh, uh, there are some good ones out there, um, and uh, uh, there's a lot of very useful information. Um, there's uh, uh, resources on Autodesk website. There's a learning community, uh, which is what you have to join when you, you want to download the free software. Um, so you're already subscribed to the learning community if you have the software. Um, but uh, you can join forums on there and ask professionals like questions about you know how to do particular things. Um, that's helpful. And most importantly, I'm, I'm around and I'm, I'm available. Um, I, you know, like I said, I, I owe first a lot for how I ended up uh, uh, pursuing my career. Uh, and, uh, uh, and I want to give back and help you guys out with your, your projects any way I can. So. So if you need to use the 3D printer, great, uh, I'm here for you. If you need help with Inventor or 3 Studio Max or any other software packages out there, uh, pretty much, uh, except for I don't know a lot about it, but, but uh, yeah. But, uh, um, uh, but uh, those, uh, uh, those are all things I'm, I'm happy to answer anytime. Um, and uh, we've got some great resources here at the college, so, so like I said, uh, 
Uh, we are a community college. We're set up to serve the community. That's the, the idea behind the name. So, so let us know how we can help, and uh, we'll do what we can. Cool. And that's what I got. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah thank